Hello, welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Uh, in the last section we learned how to calculate the current going through an inductor and basically it becomes the integral of the voltage plus whatever initial current happened to be flowing through the inductor to begin with. So here we want to do a very simple example just to kind of illustrate how we actually use that and to prove to you that it kind of makes sense. So the circuit that we're going to use to do that is a voltage source, we'll call it V. Here is our trusty inductor right here, okay? And this inductor is 100 millihenries, right? Nice round number. And because of the way we've drawn it here, we have some current I. Now notice this voltage plus minus has to be over here, so there has to be a plus minus voltage across the inductor in that sense as well. Now, of course, it all depends on how I is changing, but that's the basic idea. All right, so uh, for this problem, we will say that for T is less than zero, uh, the voltage across the inductor is zero. And for T is greater than zero, the voltage across the inductor will be 20 times T times E to the minus 10 T. So again, one of these crazy voltages that you probably won't see in a real circuit, uh, but we need to know how circuits will behave. You never know what, you know what kind of application you might be working on. So if you have an inductor, and if you have a voltage measurement across it, and you see that the voltage is changing like this, the question is, for, for question number one, is going to be, let's go ahead and sketch, sketch V of T. And ultimately, we're going to be calculating the current flowing through the inductor and plot that as well and compare it. But Let's kind of do what we did last time. So here is a plot. Here's time axis in seconds. Here's V of T. And then this looks very similar to a graph we did before. It's all zero beforehand. So what's gonna happen here is it's gonna kind of go up. It's gonna bend over and then it's gonna go like that. Not, not quite gonna touch the axis, uh, but you kind of see, you know, it's a little lumpy the way I've drawn it, but basically it's a nice smooth curve and it kind of comes down like that. Now the relevant important points here, or the, the most important uh, points I want to point out to you, this guy, this peak, is uh, 0 0.1 seconds. And this peak over here is 0 0.736 volts. All right. So that's kind of some extra information we didn't really ask to do, but as part of plotting we need to have some important points, so those are the two important points that you might see here. So what we have is we see the voltage increasing Right? We see the voltage increasing, and then the voltage begins to decrease. And the question that we're going to do next is we're going to ask ourselves, uh, what is the current flowing through this inductor? So for part B, find I sub T, question mark. Okay. So we know the voltage profile, and we know that V is equal to L di dt. And in the previous section, we rearranged all that. We did all the integration. We found out that we can go reverse and we can say that the voltage through an inductor is equal to 1 over its inductance times the integral from 0 up to whatever time we're caring about times the voltage as a function of time, which we're given in our problem, uh, or the integral of the voltage, I should say, plus whatever initial current we have flowing through the inductor, right? Um, this just comes from the constant of integration that we always get in calculus. Now, in this particular problem, we don't really have an initial uh, current. Lots of problems in the future will be showing you if there's an initial current flowing somewhere at time zero, but in this case there really is none. So this term here is really going to disappear. We're not going to have an initial current, so you can kind of forget about it, but I'm drawing it there for completeness. So let's go ahead and put our values in uh, into their respective locations, and then we'll have to do this integration.